I was always curious what kind of quad can you get from AliExpress for around 50 euro. So I finally spent those money and I've got a quad. I've got a quad called Xiaomi Ninja M6. I've got top of the line model which in theory has 8K camera resolution. It also comes with two spare batteries. In this video we will review how it looks, how it flies, what other tricks it can do, what is the image quality from the cameras. So let's jump to the review. By the way, if after watching the review you'll decide this quad is something you want to have, please check out link in the video description. This is an affiliate link, which means I'll get very small commission if you buy the quad and it will be no cost for you. The quad comes not in a super fancy uh, packaging, so just a box. Let's see what do we have inside. So inside we have a couple of manuals. Spare props, USB cable, screwdriver and some nuts. Uh, card reader, USB cable, phone holder and gimbals. Remote. I think I just push them in here. And I think it's an ultrasonic obstacle avoidance module, which is quite often used in RC toys and hobby. Let's put it where it should be. Okay, here we go. Nothing else, just empty. I actually bought a couple more batteries, but they're still on the way. So let's unfold the arms. Okay, here we go. This is how it looks with the arms unfolded. On the back, we have battery compartment. We'll just put battery in here. So we have Wi-Fi control module. We have uh, bottom camera or belly camera. We have Wi-Fi antenna and we have motorized front camera which is controllable via remote. So one thing I've noticed is that this camera looks slightly different from what's on advertised images. On advertised images we have like two lenses and this is just a piece of plastic and this is just a small lens and this is, seems to be also nothing. Uh, so we will check out camera soon but that's in short what we have on the quad. Let's put the quad on the scales. So it's roughly 170 grams. The quad comes with one battery, but I bought two spare batteries. So battery looks like this. It has built-in USB micro USB charging port, so you don't need a separate charger, and it's supposed to be 2000 milliamps. The remote which comes with the camera has on-off button, usual joystick, one button for takeoff and landing, obstacle avoidance mode activation, those two buttons control front camera up tilt, those three control uh, in-up uh, image navigation, so you can browse and view your videos and photos, and this one actually is used to uh, initiate photos and videos, long press initiate video and short press a photo. There are a couple of switches on top of the remote as well. This one is used for speed selection. It's three-way speed selection. This one is used to control quad lights and also return to home function. This one is vertical takeoff calibration, something like accelerometer. And this one is actually to initiate flip. On the side, we have USB-C charging module and SD card in the slot. This is how an image on an onboard screen looks. The quad comes with instructions on how to download and install the app. 
I've done this. This app is called Wi-Fi Cam. I'd say it's a legit app because it's present on Google Play and App Store, but be careful with the permissions because it wants literally to access everything on your phone and share your data with everything. So just be cautious on what permissions you are giving to the app. You can use on-screen joystick to control your quad. There is a way to reverse camera. There is a button to split view, button to toggle bottom and front camera, gallery access, make photo, make video. You can also use a phone holder provided with the quad, but I would say phones are heavier than the remote and it shifts the way to that side and it's uncomfortable to control the quad this way. So I would prefer to either use remote or phone. I've discharged all three batteries in the quad up until the state when quad is no longer powering up and I recharge them back and this is how much milliamps each of the batteries got back and we will take batteries with most milliamps recharged which is 1219 this one and we will see how long the flight will be. It's a bit windy today and kind of rainy but I'll, I'm inserting the battery and I'll use very scientific stand to calculate flight time now. This is our starting point. On quad. Remote. And stopwatch. So let's see how much it can hold. So we are now around 3 minutes and 40 seconds and uh, remote starts beeping which means battery is discharging. That's it, it's on the ground, landed itself, we have 6 minutes, 30 seconds roughly. That's done, pretty much 1% of the battery reported. So guys, we have 6.5 minutes of hovering time, non-aggressively as you saw here in the backyard. I'm currently in a park and we will see shortly how this flies. I'm not even going to take my sunglasses off because uh, apparently both displays either on my phone or on the remote are not working well on a direct sunlight so you can't see, you can't, you can't navigate your drone um, looking at this display so just line of sight flight. So we will start with simple take off and land buttons which is this button. Okay, so it holds its altitude, that's fine, let's put throttle a little bit. Let's try to land. Okay, that lands. But sometimes out of the blue it just falls out of the sky when you try to land the quad, so be cautious. And the only way to fix it is to restart remote. Now we will test flip button. Flip button is here and you can just call to action by uh, right joystick.
another day, another place, because I messed up originally with return to home function. So I'll try to show it again today. According to the manual, to use return to home functionality, you need to bind drone and it should be looking in the direction of the remote. So I am powering up the quad. Okay. I am powering up the remote. So at this stage, uh, if I click return home, it should go home. And when I click return home, it, start, it starts blinking basically, as you can see. And it should go into headless mode and come home. Now I remove that and let's see if it works. I've flown a little bit further, now I'm pressing the button. Seems it doesn't work at all. It's just hanging around uh, somewhere. Let's come to it. Let's come closer to it. Yeah, it's blinking as if it's returning home, you see. Now I'll... But it's not going anywhere. Attempt number two. Power on the quad. Remote and let's fly. I've flown a little bit, it's windy. I'll try to make it home now. Okay, it's going home. It's going home. Where are you going? Are you going home? Are you blinking? Yeah, it blinks, it's going home. You can probably see it. Okay, it's some cool, it works. I'll try it first time. For the sake of experiment, I am, for the short time, I am powered enough. Turn on remote. And now I will fly a little bit further up to those cones, you might see them. Okay, it comes home from the further distance. It comes home, I can see it, it comes here and actually hangs around. So I would say this function is working, let me disable it and start again. Last try. Okay, so it seems it's coming home this time, but it just decided to hang somewhere. Like, I don't know. For obstacle avoidance, it's recommended to fly indoors in a room 6x6 meters, but honestly, who is flying the quad in a closed room on 6x6 meters, unless you're in a gym and you're doing crazy freestyle or some tricks. So I'll try on just on the bushes. So let's go. I'm activating the button. That's obstacle avoidance. That's your little body. Okay, that's what you can do in terms of pushing. Hey, I want you off. Stop. Hey, I want you off. Come on. Get off. Okay, so that's it in terms of obstacle avoidance. Okay, I'm trying obstacle avoidance in the gravel. Power on quad. Press the button. And let's see. Try again on obstacle avoidance. Oh, 
you should be beeping, no? Okay, now you are beeping. Cool. Ah, so I didn't make it working, unfortunately. If you know how what I'm doing wrong, please let me know in the comments down below. Stop, 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 what are you doing? Are you avoiding obstacles? Hold on, stop. I want to turn you off. Stop! Stop! For the camera recording, so it does. Uh, he, it has two cameras, front camera and bottom camera. Uh, they are switchable via app, you can't switch them via remote, unfortunately. And recording quality is 320 by 240 on the remote and I think it's 1280 by 8 something. I'll double check at home on, um, on, a, on a phone. But now let's let's see what it records when it when it's looking to me. Hello, hello. I am little drone. Hello, how things? At this point, I think we have enough to jump into some summary and conclusion. So in terms of features, it supports auto takeoff and landing, which makes getting in the air and landing much easier. Flips are supported, so you can have some fun doing aerial tricks. It's super fun, believe me. It does have a return to home function, but be aware it's not always reliable. I wouldn't rely on it anyway. Obstacle avoidance isn't available in the park environment, so be cautious when flying near trees or structures. It might work somewhere in the closed rooms, but I haven't tested it. Camera quality is quite poor, so don't expect cinematic footage. It's actually my biggest frustration in this quad. I think even for the price of 50 euro, it could be much better. Battery performance is okay. Decent enough for short flights, but not exceptional. At the end of the video, let's try to answer the question, who is this quad for? Is it good for someone who is trying to get into FPV hobby? Definitely no. It's absolutely different experience. And if you want to get into FPV hobby, I would recommend you start with better FPV Air 65. See card on the top of the video. Is it the quad which is good for someone who is trying to do cinematic stuff? No, absolutely. It's not suitable for cinematic shooting. The image quality and stability aren't just there. It's terrible. However, it's a fun option for kids to play with in the park. Light, safe, and easy to control in the open space. Overall, this squad is more a casual flyer than a serious tool, good for basic fun, but not for professional use or hobby. Thank you for watching. See you in the next videos. Cheers.